Friends, if you've ever struggled with painting large florals, today is your day because I'm gonna teach you how I like to do it. So you just saw my reference photo there. It's big, it's beautiful. I'm using a filbert brush as well. And that's gonna give us some ease with our painting because we don't have to stress out. I've got a number six round as well. And we can use that for details as we see fit. I'm starting off by spraying down my whole palette so I can get all those paints nice and loose and juicy, ready for our painting experience today. And we're gonna use our number six round. If you have a larger brush or a smaller, use what you have. Guys, by the way, I'm using a cotton paper. It is taped down, but I'm also using the back of it. You can paint on the back of your paper. It's fine, and it's also lovely because you're recycling and you're not feeling hopefully stressed about wasting anything. So I've got black on my brush and I'm just making these nice kind of diagonal lines around little brush strokes because we're making a really large center. So this flower, this Cosmo is quite large in my reference. I'm actually following along and you can't see it, but it is off screen. Just to make sure that I'm kind of getting those brush strokes in where I want to, where I want to place them. I'm gonna grab some yellow now and we'll do a pretty thick amount of yellow paint. I like to call that a cream, not very much water on my brush. And I'm just gonna go in between all the dark marks and start creating those. Now, some people might wonder why I start with this center of the flower. A lot of people will just start painting your petals and then adding the center when everything is dry. I'm switching to my filbert here for my petals. And I was saying that it's more stress-free to paint with a filbert because, I didn't explain it, but it's simply because it's already, it's already got this beautiful shape here and it is rounded like a petal, so you don't have to really worry about creating those round shapes. I've mixed up some paint here. I've added black to my pink. You can add black to red to make a burgundy. And I've got pinks, purples, and burgundy. You can use red as well. I'm just taking the side of the brush and then the flat part of the brush and just moving that brush back and forth just to create these beautiful petal shapes. I'm adding different colors as well. I do quick strokes. If this is too fast for you, I always encourage you guys just to pause the video, catch yourself up. There's no worry in that. And we're just going around the center, creating these beautiful petals from the outside in so that the outside of the petal, it will be round. And then we just connect it to that center bit. I do like to mix up the shades of colors or just the colors in general so that we have some variety with this floral. Now, I was saying that I do like to add centers first just because I wanna make sure that the center, which I feel is so absolutely beautiful and fabulous, um, really stands out and has enough space before I add those petals around it. So creating more of that burgundy color, black, pink, and you're good to go. So once this has dried or it's sort of dried, you're gonna go over the top. This is a very concentrated amount of color and we're just adding in those petal shapes on top. We want some differentiation, some shadow, and if it isn't dry, that's fine. You can still work with what you've got. I work quickly so that I don't overthink, but some people might feel a bit more distressed or anxious by working fast. You can do some little lines like I'm doing here, and you can even do a third layer when this is dry if you want to. It's really up to you. So just have a lot of fun with it. I'm painting some pink over the top now and just really making sure that I'm layering. Okay, so if you're enjoying this video, please give it a like and leave me a comment. What is one of your favorite flowers to paint and why? I'd love to hear your thoughts. So now we're gonna start with the greenery. You can see that my flower is looking a little wonky. Some of those petals are just kind of sticking out strange, but that's okay. We can go ahead and add another layer later on if we want to, just to straighten things out. So I've got my thinner brush and I'm, I'm doing a pretty thick stem because this is a large bloom. Don't want to put a tiny little stalk on it and you know then it just looks like it's not gonna be supported. So you can use a bright green, you can use a sap green or a sage green, really depending on the look you're going for. So I've got some more green on my brush and as I'm kind of thinking about where to put the leaves in all of this, I just want you guys to consider maybe breaking out 
from this and trying your own version. You could make the leaves longer. And when I say leaves, I mean these are just kind of little thin bits that spray out everywhere. And that's one of those beautiful things that's unique about a Cosmo flower. So I think we'll do two of these, one on each side. So I'm allowing the brush to be held really loose in my hand. And you know, the whole point of this video is to give you some encouragement to create big, beautiful blooms. And the biggest tip that I could give you for creating big blooms is having a reference photo of a big bloom. When I have this book, you saw it at the beginning, it is giant in size and it really encourages me to kind of emulate that and paint it like that. Now, this painting here definitely has its own style. It is not a replica. I'm not copying the original, but I just want to use it for inspiration and just darkening up the little side part of this stem here and some of these little sprigs, these little leaves as well. So painting big also can be accomplished by using a large brush, such as that lovely filbert brush. The larger your brush, I feel like the more comfortable you'll be with painting larger brush strokes. And then of course, another tip is using a large piece of paper. So you can paint 10 or 50 flowers, really tiny on a page, or you can paint one huge one and just kind of see the difference. I'm adding some splatter here. Guys, if you are liking this video, um, let me know in comments what your favorite part is. And remember, I am on Patreon and that is a membership where you can check out a monthly subscription starting at $3 a month and going up from there depending on the bonus content you want, exclusive tutorials. We even have drawing sheets and a lot of fun chit chat where we can share our paintings. So check that out linked below. So now that that's all dried, I'm really grabbing some thick cream consistency pink paint and going over the top of all this. So you can see I'm angling my brush, always starting from the outside and bringing the petal in for this painting and really quick uh, movements, movements of the wrist here so that oh, I did go the opposite way. So, you know, sometimes I change it up, but for the most part, I want that round filbert tip to be front and center uh, of those petals. So we start from the outside in. Now I'm just taking a more concentrated black. You could use brown or even navy and darkening up that middle section just to make sure that everything stands out. Sometimes when you're putting the petals in second, you leave some white space because you don't want your middle to start spreading into the petals if it's still wet, which oftentimes when I'm working, I don't dry in between. So I just leave a little extra white space around and then later on when everything is dry with the petals, I can go back in and darken up. And sometimes with watercolor, because things dry one shade lighter, you just need to go back in and do a little bit of a, a tidying up or a touching up and there's no problem with that. So how are you feeling right now as I'm adding in, I'm gonna add in some more yellow. Just take a deep breath if you're feeling anxious at all. I want you guys to enjoy your painting experience. I want you to enjoy what you learn. I want you to love what you do. And if you are not using watercolor or any type of art or crafting for self-care, I really encourage you to because it just opens up that creative space in your brain, just adding a couple little, you can do some dots or dashes here for some extra fluffiness. And it gives you a space where you can make something with your own hands and feel that dopamine release because you are feeling proud of yourself, you're excited. If you're not feeling proud and you're only into the end result but not the journey, I encourage you to take a few deep breaths, remind yourself this is supposed to be fun and remember that putting brush strokes on paper, that's the fun part, the fun part. And if you like your end result, that's a bonus, but it shouldn't be about the end result and being stressed getting there. So as I'm taking off the tape to reveal the final painting here, I hope that you are encouraged to continue to practice whatever creativity you love. Happy painting, you guys, and especially happy mental health.